Welcome again to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Goldman. Joining me right now is Dan Crawford from HammyN.com and the Green Pole Podcast. This episode, Dan and myself are going to preview the upcoming match for Fulham against Newcastle United at St. James's Park. Dan's going to be there, and we're going to preview the match. I also want to mention that Dan on the Green Pole Podcast with two very good co-hosts do a very good preview. It's Alan Drew Jr. and his son. They do a wonderful preview. Please do check that out. I would highly recommend that. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other phone supporters find us. Okay. Dan, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. Uh, Ross, always a pleasure to be with you, my friend. Okay. Well, let's not waste any time. You have to get up early, so let's get this show started. Let's start with the big news this week that Baron Leno signed an extension to his contract and is going to be with Fulham for a while now. This is huge news, Dan. Your thoughts? Yeah, it's massive, Ross, I think. Uh, but Leno deserves a new contract. Uh, we're pleased that he uh, wanted to sign one. He's been really outstanding since he came in uh, to the club. Everyone will know that I was a big advocate for Marek Rodak. I felt that Marek deserved an opportunity uh, to be Fulham's Premier League goalkeeper, having got us promoted twice. Um uh, well, three times, but but twice uh, as the first choice goalkeeper. Um, but you can't argue with Bernd Leno's performances since he's held the jersey, and he and he helped establish Fulham in the in the top flight, finishing tenth uh, last season. We're tenth again now, um, and he's been a really key part of that defensive solidity uh, that has characterised this sort of last eighteen months or so. And goalkeepers these days only tend to get better going into their thirties. We had a we had some of the best periods of Edwin Van der Sar's illustrious career when he joined Fulham and moved into his mid to late thirties playing for us. And then Mark Schwartz's Absolutely. Fulham career was even later than that in terms of his age. Bernd Leno very clear in his comments uh, to the media and to. Uh, through Fulham's official website, that he feels there's a lot more to come from the club. And I think we see what the strategy is because we've seen Polinia wonderfully sign a new contract. We've seen Anthony Robinson sign a new contract. We've seen William, well, he didn't sign a new contract, but he signed up even though he's, even though he's at a, an advanced age, if he doesn't mind me saying. Tim Ream uh, signed a new contract. I think the strategy is if you've proven yourself, uh, Bobby Reed, Bobby Deckard over Reed as well, if you've proven yourself to be uh, a proven performer and a, and a solid player at Premier League level, then you can get a new contract, you can get a salary increase and you can commit to, to Fulham Football Club. So I do hope that Burnt passes uh, Tossin Adarabio and Kenny Tete the pen um, uh, and we can keep strengthening the squad. Totally agree, Dan. And I'm glad that you mentioned those two other players. I would love to see them both sign. And I think that would be huge for Fulham Football Club. Hopefully they do. That would be wonderful for Fulham's future. Before we move on from Baron Leno, I want to get your thoughts. Where does he rank? You named two wonderful goalkeepers. Is he in the same category with Van de Sar and Schwarzer? Does he belong as the trio? All right. So I've met Burn. So if he comes across this, uh, answer or, or, or what I say here. I'm <laughs> apologising in advance because I don't quite put Bernd Leno in the same, uh, in that upper echelon in terms of his Fulham career. And there are two distinct differences. Both Van der Sar and Schwartz have played in European campaigns, successful European campaigns uh, for Fulham. Leno has yet to do that, although he's played uh, successfully in European competition. Uh, for other clubs, I'm sure he can. He's looking at it. He's likely to go to the European Championships if he keeps up this form and stays fit. For Germany, um, I'm sure they're sort of. And I haven't forgotten, Russ, that you predicted a seventh place finish. It looks. We'll get onto that, but yep. it looks perhaps a bit more doable um, after the last two results. Uh, but I think for Bernd Leno to eclipse Schwarzer 
And Van der Sar, and I'd actually put them, I'm one of those people who would still have Van der Sar as the best Fulham goalkeeper uh, that, I, that I've seen and the better okay. of the two. But for Leno to, to get above or, or level pegging with those two, then we need to uh, dust off our passports and go on a European tour. And who knows, <laughs> that might well be, uh, be in our future. Let's hope so. Dan, I haven't mentioned often lately that I did predict seventh. Listen, I'm not saying that they're going to get seventh, but right now they sit 10th and they are playing some excellent football. So we'll see what happens. I still think it's unlikely, but I'm not giving up on that dream. And I'm glad that you talked about the European dream. I don't think anything should be off the table at this point as you've watched Fulham progress through the season from where they began, Dan, and where they are now. They've gone light years lately, and maybe it just took this team to come together. Maybe it all came together during an international break for them to finally be all on the same page. It really is amazing to watch, and uh, I look forward to this match tomorrow. I know you do as well. Let's get to it. Let's talk about Newcastle United. I happen to watch the Champions League match just to get a feel for what is going on with Newcastle United, and I've watched several of their matches. What are your thoughts on them heading into this match? Yeah, I think we're in danger of rather overstating the problems that Newcastle have. Yes, they've got injuries, you know, um, and yes, they're exhausted, and perhaps it's come a little bit soon, the sort of Champions League. uh, It probably came a year earlier than they might have expected. And so they're, I, I think I'm right in saying they're 17, uh, sorry, they're seventh with right. uh, 26 points from 16 games. Um, so they've had a little stumble, haven't they? And yes, they. I, I watched uh, that game too against uh, Milan uh, in the week uh, and I've seen a couple of their other games. Um, so Newcastle in danger of losing those three, going on a second uh, three losing three league games in a row for the second time this season. But the reason I say it's rather overstated is they've won each of their last six league matches at St. James's Park and they've only let in one goal in that time. That's their longest home winning run in the top flight for 20 years. Um, and if I might say, we haven't won in I think it's seven top flight away games at yeah. Newcastle. Um, so I think we're making this. I, I, I'm quite comfortable about where Fulham are um, going into this because I think we'll be full of confidence. But I think right. if anyone's expecting Newcastle to be frail or brittle, I don't see that. I think how Eddie Howe, who's a very good manager, um, will want a reaction from his players and that makes Newcastle even more dangerous. Um, and they've got some, you know, they've got some talent in the forward line. They so. absolutely do, Dan. No, they absolutely do. And listen, I understand why you are talking about Newcastle in this way. I was very impressed with how they played last season. I'm a big fan of Eddie Howe. I think he's an excellent manager. I'll just say that. And they do have some really good players and some very dangerous players. With all that said, Dan, they are going to be without two key players in this match, okay? So let's talk about it. How much of a loss is Kieran Trippier in this match? Now, this one might surprise you. How much of a loss is Pope in this match? Because I've listened to a lot of talk from Newcastle United supporters. They're not sold on Dubrovka. I think this is a significant loss as well, Dan. Let's talk about this, and we don't know if Anthony Gordon is going to be ready to go. He might be, and he's a dangerous player, but will he be 100% heading into this match? Now, I would rather, me personally, I would rather play against a fully healthy Newcastle United team and Fulham do well against them because there won't be any questions. But this is the situation at hand. Let's just call it what it is. These are significant losses, Dan. They are. I mean, I would say Trippier is banned because he's um, picked up too many bookings. The way he's been defending, I'd almost want Fulham to petition the Premier League to say, you know, let him play it right back <laughs> because he's not in, in not in particularly good form. Um, 
Nick Pope's a really good goalkeeper. I don't, you know, England internationally is stacked with uh, pretty good goalkeepers, uh, I think. Um, so that's the reason why Pope hasn't really had an international chance. I mean, Dubravka is keeping and has kept historically Rodak out of the international picture, hasn't he, for, um, for Slovenia? Slovakia? Slovakia. Um, sorry. That's getting okay. My, getting my East, my European countries mixed up. Uh, not for the first time. Uh, <laughs> I, I like... Pope's a really good goalkeeper. I actually think the Newcastle fans are probably being a bit harsh on Dubravka. He's not in Pope's class, but he seemed to get above Tim Krull a couple of years ago at Newcastle and Tim Krull never got back in. Um, you know... The, the, the key with the goalkeeping situation is it's not just the goalkeeper, it's the defence in front of him and how is that understanding and it's not going to be as good between Dubravka and his back four as it is for Pope. Uh, but Dubravka's still a Premier League goalkeeper. There may be a difference uh, between them. Anthony Gordon's the interesting one for me because ever since I've seen Anthony Gordon as a young man playing for in Everton's youth setup. He, he's been really good and he's really kicked on this year again for Newcastle. Uh, I think it's a hamstring. I'm not 100% on that. They've been a bit opaque about um, his fitness, but uh, he, he's the one. You know, I would just say they've got Gordon, they've got Almeida on, and of course they've got Callum Wilson. We don't need to be reminded about Callum Wilson, um, what he does against Fulham, but he's scored. Uh, 19 league goals in 2023 uh, for Newcastle. We know he likes a little stumble in the penalty area against us at St. James's Park or outside the penalty area, as Joachim Anderson will testify to. So I think um, they've got plenty of strength and depth. I wouldn't necessarily say that uh, these are real borderline problems for Newcastle, in my view. Very good. I'm glad that you shared your thoughts on that because I don't want any excuses if Fulham gets something out of this match. I still think this is a dangerous team. As you said, they're coming off of a bad loss. They're going to be ready for this match, and it's going to be a challenge for Fulham to win this match. So, Dan, let's move on. How does Fulham win this match? I want to get your thoughts on what you think Marco Silva's strategy is going to be in this match against the good side like Newcastle United. We know that Marco plays in the front foot. That's not going to change. But what do you think Fulham need to do to win this match, in your opinion? I think they probably need to be a bit more conservative than Marco's going to be. Um, I, I, I know. I, in order to try and get... I mean, we were very close to getting a result last season. I will say that. I'm sure you remember that game, Russ. Yep. Um, you know, we won't relive it. Uh, because it's still painful. Um, but I thought we were unlucky. Uh, Marco has hit on a formula that has worked against Nottingham Forest and uh, West Ham and, uh, and prior to that, Wolves as well to differing degrees. But I think it's more difficult to play that way so adventurously away from home. But if you look at how Newcastle have done over the last couple of seasons, they've done a lot of it with fairly low percentage possession. Right? They don't dominate the ball. So, you know, there's a lot of discussion in on our, uh, on our preview and in other forums and amongst other fans about, you know, how do we stop Newcastle from playing? We're going to have to do that, but I do think we have to sort of throw punches ourselves. And I'll look at the successful Fulham teams that have gone to St. James's Park, even in recent history, they've all had a go. No one sat in and, and sort of nicked a 1 0. Even that Roy Hodgson side that won there in 2009 to clinch, almost clinch European football, but practically send Newcastle down that year. Jamanti Kamara scored the goal. Um, even that Hodgson team, not renowned for being overly adventurous went for it and uh, and it defended stoutly, but won quite easily. Other teams, you know, the template is the uh, 2017, was it 2018, when uh, Newcastle were top of the championship and we beat them 
three one uh with a lovely strike from Tom Kearney, who I'm sure we'll come on to and a couple of goals from Ryan Tessignon. Um going there and getting on the front foot. But I think it's more difficult because of the calibre of this Newcastle side. They might be missing several first-teamers, but they've still got high-quality players. So I'd be erring towards a more cautious mindset. But I think as near as damn it, Silver's going to try and play the same way. That's interesting, Dan, because that's going to be how I think Fulham are going to win this match. And I'm going to say Fulham are going to win this match. Okay, I'm going there. I'm telling you right now, I'm predicting a Fulham victory when we get to predictions. But I think that how Fulham are going to win this match is to go to St. James's Park with the same mentality and the same game plan of the last two matches. Now, this is a very difficult place to go. And the other way to look at this is to have the approach like you did against Liverpool. Go a little bit more conservative. Play Harrison Reed. I'm saying no. I'm saying you go the exact same way you did at Craven Cottage and you go for it. I think he's going to do what I want him to do. The question is, can they pull it off? Because I think either they're going to win or they could potentially get blown out here. Going this route. Going this direction. So for me, I would take the same approach that they have the last two matches. And this is, I think, the key for the match for me. Get to the second half, 60 minutes in. I think they're going to have tired legs. And that's where you can really take advantage of Newcastle United. We've seen this several times with teams playing in midweek because of European football. Get to the 60th minute and do your damage after that. If, if Fulmer close, Dan, in my opinion... From the 60th minute on, they're going to be in good shape to get in something from this match. Dare I say win it. For me, it's trying to get to that 60th minute close. Yeah, I can see that, Russ. I mean, I, I, I do think if if the game's in the balance, um, there'll be Newcastle will be heavy legged. The fans as well will be twitchy. Um, but I could, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be as cautious as that. Uh, we're not going to play Catanaccio or anything like that until the 60th minute. We, I'd like them to go out there and, hey, it was very enjoyable sure. last Sunday when we were 3-0 up and we scored three goals, bang, 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 bang in 18 minutes. And, <laughs> you know, it could have been like, why, why, why not? Why not go and try and score goals and, and kill it off? And then yeah, and I'm not saying don't, don't score goals. No, I know you're not, Russ. I'm, I'm just, I'm saying like, if the opportunity presents itself, the opportunity, oh, yeah. pres- the opportunity presents itself, and you know Silver's going to tell them you've got the ability to cause problems. And also, it's a big playing surface. And I think you this know? is a benefit to form, Dan. I actually yes. think this is a benefit. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big playing surface. You can stretch the game. The one selection issue is whether uh, William is probably ready. Yes. Um, you know, Mark, because it was an away game, Marco Silva's press conference was uh, on Thursday rather than on Friday. So you still had training today. I have no news on um, how William trained and whether he is likely to start. Um, and the thing about William is he's just so sublime at keeping the ball. He's quicker than people think and he's deadly. Um, and he'll occupy and he'll do the work back the other way. Um, uh, as well, he'll hold the ball in tight spaces. There are times when I'm when I'm at the game and I'm watching him, and he's taken the ball into traffic, and he slaloms his way through a gap that you know. Even if I was walking on the sidewalk, Russ, and there was pe- there were people that close to me, I wouldn't feel comfortable just walking through the gap. Never mind with the football and going away from them. You know, he's a magician. Um, Harry Wilson's in good form. He might come in for William, uh, and there's also a question that I write, that, that that I would pose of whether Tete is a better one-on-one defender than Castagna, and whether Tete gets a nod. But then you've got to consider we've got a big game on. They're coming quick and quick, thick and fast. We've got a big game on Tuesday night as well. So um, there, there are a lot of things to juggle, but I think we have to be um, adventurous. And, and go for it. Okay, great, Dan. Coming up next, Dan and I are going to share our starting 11, what we think Marco's going to do, 
and then predict the match at the very end of the show. Okay, Dan, I'm going to go to you first. Give me your starting 11, then I'll share mine, and then we can both discuss what we think Marco is going to do. Give me your starting 11. So I'd probably go uh, Leno in goal, obviously. Uh, Tete at right back. Uh, I would go with uh, Tosin and Bassi for the simple reason that Diop needs some game time. Uh, Anthony Robinson at uh, left back. I, I, I'd change it up slightly in the midfield. I would go Reed, Kearney, Polina as a three. Um, and that would leave us without Andreas Pereira. And you'd play William if he's fit on one side of Wobi, uh, obviously on the other side. And uh, Jimenez through the middle. But there are options within that. You could even shift a Wobi into the centre, but I've liked a Wobi out wide. He's added real invention. So so that's my starting eleven. I, I think Marco will go as close to unchanged as he can. Um, I'm just not sure how much joy Andreas Pereira is going to get. Um, and we might need somebody to to win the ball and, and keep it uh, for us and track those Newcastle runs but that's the cautious approach and I'm fairly certain that Marco's not going to take that option. I don't think he's going to Dan. In fact, I am going to go with an unchanged side. I am going to mm, go with the, makes sense, with, yeah. And this is why I'm feeling this way. First of all, it's worked so well. I would go with the same starting level we've had for the last two matches. That's if William is ready to go. If William's ready to go, I think we keep it the way it is. I understand the argument for Tete, but I stick with Castagna for continuity's sake. It's been working. So you have Bassi and Tosin. That's been working. You have Castagna. I like him on the right. He's solid. And on the left, you have Anthony Robinson, who keeps proving me wrong. In the middle, I want Tom Kearney there, and I want him with Paulina. And I think Andres Pereira, with the players that he's been playing with, has found a new life. So I want Pereira in there. On the left, I'm going William. On the right, Awobi, because I think Awobi is very dangerous wide right, believe it or not. I think he's causing clubs all kinds of damage. And I think on a larger surface, it might even be more from Alex Awobi. Then, of course, you have Jimenez up front. Dan, I think that Marco's going to go with us. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I think that's um, I think that's likely given, you know, if everybody's fit. And, and they can, because I think they probably have to be a little check on how TC's doing. Right. Um, because, uh, you know, it would be almost three consecutive 90 minutes. Um, and that's quite a lot for him. And it's just a question of whether you want Tom to start at Goodison Park. You know, you do have to think about that, because that's a big game um, to get us potentially into the further into the uh, League Cup, you know, to be, be a couple of wins from, from Wembley is massive. Um, and, but, I thought, you know, you, you have to factor how you're going to manage the recovery and manage the game time for players in this really busy period, um, especially as more will be demanded of, of the majority of our squad because several people will be going off to the African... Cup of Nations as well, so there are Very things. That, there are these little things you have to think about, but yeah, I, I think Marco will go as close as he can to an unchanged side. That's what I think, Dan. And listen, I understand with one eye to the cup match against Everton, but I'm still prioritizing if I'm Marco this match against Newcastle United because I think this is a wonderful opportunity for Fulham to make another statement here. Now, they might not make the one that I want them to make, which is a victory, but I think they have an opportunity to, and I think you should go for it if you get the opportunity. That's why I think, knowing Marco, knowing his approach, he's going to be loyal to the players that have scored 10 goals in two matches and go for it again. That's what I think he's going to do, but we shall see, my friend. All right, to end the show, let's go with your prediction, and then I'll share mine. Yeah, so I have to be consistent. I, I, uh, I'm in a little prediction league with, uh, with some of your uh, listeners uh, who, who come to the games with me. Uh, and I predicted a 1-1 draw on Thursday. 
<laughs> and I then stayed that way in our, you know, our broadcast uh, last night. So I'm going to have to stick with my 1-1. Um, and I wouldn't be too disappointed with a point at St. James's Park. Neither would I. Uh, but I think, you know, are you, are you predicting a third 5 nil in a row, Ross? Are you that optimistic? I'm not that optimistic, Dan, but I understand the prediction for 1-1. I actually watched a really good show yesterday from the guys from Loaded Mag, which is uh, a Newcastle United show, and um, Emilio was on there, and they all had predictions at the end. And two of the predictions, there were four people on the show, two predicted a Newcastle United victory. Emilio predicted, like you, 1-1. Oh, and then the yeah. fo- and oh, then the yeah. fourth person who is a stats based person actually predicted two two, which I found interesting. So that leads to my prediction, and I've given this some thought, Dan, and I've watched Newcastle United, and I've also obviously watched Fulham. Am I bold enough to predict five nil? Of course not. I'm not going to do that, Dan. Mm-hmm. But I am going to predict a Fulham victory, and I'm not going to predict a close Fulham victory. I'm predicting three to one to fall oh because I don't think the goals are going to stop. I think they're going to continue. I think they're going to build on, on everything that they've done so far. This includes the Liverpool match and the Wolves match. I think they've shown themselves that they can score goals and it doesn't have to be one player. They are playing for each other. That's why the goals are flowing. I think Dan, and I think as you mentioned, one of the reasons why if I don't see Tom Kearney starting in this match, I'll be very disappointed because I think he's been a key figure to all of these goals. So for me, I'm predicting three to one because I think it's going to be the same starting 11. I think Fulham are going to get this victory. That's how I feel. I'm going to be out on a limb. Listen, I'm the one that predicted a Fulham victory against Liverpool. And for almost the end of the don't, match, don't was, remind no. me, don't remind me, it's still painful. <laughs> I know it's very painful. Still, every time I close my eyes, I can still see that foul on Bobby that could overeat by Simic. And it was a foul. You and I, we can agree on that. That was a foul. I've watched it time and time again. But so many breaks went our way, I guess you could say, in the Wolves match. So sometimes they go for you, sometimes they go against you. But I feel good about this. I feel good. I understand who they're facing, and they're going to be full on in this match. I think the first 20 minutes, Dan, are going to be key. Because if Fulham can survive the first 20 minutes and then get into the, them playing the way they want to play, I think Fulham have a good chance to get all three points. That's the way I'm looking at it. Your thoughts before we wrap this up? Well, yeah, I mean, I do think there's an opportunity for sure. Um, but you have to prove yourself every week, every time in this Premier League. You know, and also the big difference between the three games you've referenced, you know, the home game against Wolves, the the five mil wins. I still it still uh, staggers me that we've beaten Nottingham Forest and West Ham five mil, Russ. I mean, <laughs> I know. And the the magnificence of the football, and it it seems remiss that we haven't really had a chance to talk about Tom Kearney playing three hundred games and Tim following Tim Ream past that milestone. Yeah. And you, you mentioned it in passing how pivotal he is. There's definitely an opportunity. But Newcastle, have, you know, by virtue of their sort of Saudi sports washing, um, they've amassed some talent. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Within their squad. So I think they can cope with the number of injuries they've got and they'll be fired up. You know, Fulham were fired up to prove to people uh, after some results didn't go their way that they can still do it. You know, that's what powered these 5 nil wins. Extraordinary performance. So Newcastle will, with... with expectations being higher on time side, they'll want to bounce back. And a wounded or cornered animal is a very dangerous animal indeed. Um, and look, let's just hope we can put in a performance at St. James's Park and uh, and come away with something because uh, uh, we need to, really. We need to build on the momentum that the side have generated, find the consistency that Marco Silva has spoken about needing in order to take Fulham forward and get us close to playing that European football that will um, that, that, that the club should be aiming for now, given that Silva has signed his new contract and he wants to carry on, we should be reaching for the stars. See, that's my point then. That's also why I am 
predicting a victory because I see this as a wonderful opportunity for another step in that direction. Now, there could be a setback with a loss. It's, it would be a setback. But if they were to able to get a victory here, Dan, then you can build on that. You can The building blocks continue. So I'm feeling good about this. I could be dead wrong. I've been dead wrong many times. I predicted <laughs> seventh, and I looked like an idiot pretty much for most of the season. Maybe not as much of an idiot right now, but I weed with my heart. I'm a positive person, and I feel good about this match. I still say three to one to four. Let's say if I'm right, Dan. Before we wrap up this show, I want to give a huge thank you to you for doing the last two shows of the Green Pole Podcast with the Druids. They were excellent, and I really enjoyed them. And I would highly recommend everyone going to listen to the Green Pole Podcast if you're on your way. Tomorrow, to the match, we are recording this Friday. Take a listen to the Green Pole Podcast and Cottage Talk. That'll get you ready for this match because both really are excellent podcasts. I'll throw in full mission, full focus as well. But I really enjoyed your show, Dan, and uh, I can't say enough good things about it. Thank you for doing it. Oh, absolute pleasure. We've had some uh, difficulties getting the schedule to align, and I've had some health issues, but... Uh, it was good. We, we felt like actually, very funnily, I sit behind uh, uh, someone who who listens and 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 devours all the Fulham content. And halfway through the second half, when we were laying uh, the uh, West Ham, oh, sorry, the uh, against Nottingham Forest, he said, "You're going to have to do a podcast about this. You know, you're going to have to do a podcast about this." And then after Nottingham Forest, he said, "Well, you're definitely going to have to do a podcast." And uh, look, I'm glad to have made it work. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure why anyone listens to us rabbit on, Russ, but people seem to. And we are blessed with an awful lot of great podcast and fan uh, media outlets to supplement what Fulham Football Club put out there. You know, Jeff Proust does a really good job and, and Carmelo Mustard and Liam, Liam Miles and other members of Jack Pooley. And I'll, I'll miss some people out now, I'm afraid. But the, the club's... Uh, output is very good. We're spoiled for choice, and now we've got great, great entertainment on the pitch as well. So long may it continue. You know, up the Fulham, come on, you whites. We've got a team to be proud of, and you know, I'm sure we'll all be singing on, on Saturday afternoon. And long, and long may it continue that um, Marco Silva's genius is uh, is reflected in the uh, in the results of this football club because I really think we're approaching exciting times for Fulham, Russ. I do too, Dan, and that's what makes this so interesting tomorrow because I think regardless of what happens tomorrow, I think Fulham are headed in the right direction as January comes, and I hope that they build on this squad that they built. So I think everything is pointing in the right direction. So I'm pretty excited about this upcoming match. But anyways, Dan, thank you so much for doing the show. Let's wrap this up. For Dan Crawford from Hamian.com, the Green Pole Podcast, I'm Russ Goldman. Thank you as always for watching and listening to College Talk part of the TalkSport Fan Network.